Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and we're continuing along with the WWDC beta releases, this time focusing on the top 10 features for watchOS 6. In terms of actual updates and features, watchOS 6 doesn't seem to be the biggest Apple Watch update out there, but it does add a lot of important structural elements like an independent app store, and also expanding some of Apple's own applications from the iPhone, bringing them over and making them make sense on the Apple Watch. So as with any watchOS release, watchOS OS 6 has a bunch of new watch faces. I think my favorite watch face out of watch OS 6 so far has been the California dial. Traditionally, a California watch face is a watch face that combines Arabic numerals with Roman numerals. However, with this California watch face on the Apple Watch, you can customize that to either just showing you Arabic numerals or showing you Roman numerals. A mix of both, or if you just want a plain minimalist watch face, you can get rid of the numbers altogether. You can customize the colors between black, white, or blue, and you can either have this as a full screen watch face or a circular watch face with more complications. The California watch face is pretty sharp looking, and it's also the first full screen watch face that is using the analog style. So it makes reading time a lot easier compared to the other analog watch faces where they usually opt for more of a circular design. You also get a new solar dial watch face. This shows you the current position of the sun and that changes throughout the day. You also now have the option for a gradient watch face and you can customize this between a bunch of different colors. Another new watch face is the modular compact watch face. This is kind of a riff off the traditional modular watch face, but updating it for super complications. You can also have an analog watch in the top right corner or a digital watch. And then there are two new numerals watch face, numerals duo and numerals mono. Now, one of the new focuses of iOS 13 and watchOS 6 is focused on improving health. And one of the methods they're doing that with now is a new decibel reader on the Apple Watch. So this decibel reader basically measures the ambient noise around your environment using the Apple Watch's microphones. So you get a nice handy decibel meter that goes all the way up to 120 decibels. And then it starts at green and then when the volume gets really loud, the color changes from green to yellow. In the app, it gives you a handy description and list of all the different levels of sound and what levels could damage your hearing, especially if you're listening to that sound at an extended period of time. You can also get this in the form of a complication on your Apple Watch, so you don't have to dig into the actual app to see if the hearing environment is particularly loud and the Apple Watch will also send you a notification if it is detecting some loud noises. I really like Apple branching out into different parts of health. I would never expect them to go into hearing health, but with this new feature on the Apple Watch, it's going to be interesting to see if our behaviors change from listening to loud environments or if this will surface other relevant and useful information like having AirPods or headphones on at really loud volumes. Another feature that's mixed into watchOS 6 as well as iOS 13 is the addition of a trend tab in the activity app. So even though you access this on your iPhone, you get this information by wearing your Apple Watch. In the Trends app, you're getting a much bigger picture of your overall activity over time. So you get trends for move, exercise, and the amount of distance you're traveling each day. You can also see the trend for your stand hours, how many flights of stairs you climb a day, and your overall cardio fitness. Inside each activity metric, you can see how often you're hitting your goals for the last 365 days or over a 90 day period. I recently had my wisdom teeth removed so you can see that my move and exercise trends are currently down from what they would usually be. The Apple Watch really has been great for keeping track of how much we move every day and now with this feature, we can get a better picture over a longer period of time of how active we are, of how much we're standing, and overall hopefully our fitness levels and if we see the trend starting to go down, now we have the ability to see that data over a longer period of time and this should help people out realizing that maybe, oh wait, now I'm not moving as much with my Apple Watch, I really need to pick up the pace. Now I did wanna mention one other health feature because I really like Apple expanding into these health areas with the Apple Watch and the iPhone. Unfortunately, I really can't test this feature, but I did wanna include it in this list of top 10 features. That would be the Cycles app, which is only really applicable to women, and that is an app that's focused on helping women track their menstrual cycle. And even though I can't personally use this app, I just think it's really important that Apple keeps expanding the Apple Watch as something that everyone can use to better keep track of their overall health. 
Another great feature on watchOS 6 is the inclusion of Now Playing being its own application. The Now Playing screen also gets a nice UI refresh. So now when you change the volume, it's on the right hand side, right next to the digital crown. You also have an updated look for the play, pause, and skip buttons, as well as the circle inside of the play button actually shows the progress of the song or whatever you're listening to, which can be a really helpful indicator, especially if you're listening to longer form content like a podcast or an audiobook. You now have a much nicer UI to pick between the now playing sections on your Apple Watch, so you can quickly change between your Apple Watch, your iPhone, your Apple TV, or your HomePods. And the best thing for me is now that you have a now playing app, you can also include it inside of your complications. Another addition to watchOS 6 this year is the inclusion of a standalone calculator app. So now you can access the calculator directly on your Apple Watch and the UI looks pretty similar to the one we would find on our iPhones. So now you can quickly calculate right on your wrist. My favorite function about the Apple Watch calculator app is that it has access to a tip section. So now when you're splitting the bill at the restaurant, you can quickly get a nice tip percentage and then split it between different people. This makes calculating the tip and splitting it with people at a restaurant much easier. Another brand new app is the ability to now use voice memos directly on your Apple Watch. And this is a really handy app because now you can have access to the inbuilt microphone directly on your Apple Watch and then you can quickly record different conversations or leave voice memos for yourself. Anytime that you have a thought, anytime you want to record a conversation, now you have access to the microphone directly inside of your Apple Watch. Recording is a fairly simple process as well. You can select between different recordings and the microphone and audio quality coming out of the speakers inside of the Apple Watch are really good so you can actually play back the voice memos directly on your Apple Watch. This is a test recording on watchOS 6 using the voice memos app. Okay, now one last app update refresh comes in the form of reminders. Now, this was something I didn't hear a lot of people talk about, but reminders on iPadOS, iOS, and macOS got an updated UI refresh, and that also carries over to watchOS 6. So now you get a nice new colorful UI with access to your today view, your scheduled view, all of your views, or different customized lists that you made inside of the reminders app. Checking all of your different reminders is a really simple task on the Apple Watch, and it's really nice to go throughout the day, check the app on your wrist, and then check off the things that you've accomplished as you're doing them. Now, if Apple didn't add the exact app you wanted, you're really gonna like this next feature because now the Apple Watch with watchOS 6 has its own independent app store so you can quickly download Apple Watch apps directly on your Apple Watch without the need for an iPhone. And you wouldn't think an app store on the Apple Watch would be a good idea, especially with such a small screen, but somehow it just works. So you get a nice single focus scrolling view on the Apple Watch app store. The Apple Watch app store categorizes a lot of these apps into specific categories like exercise or weather. You can of course download these Apple Watch apps directly onto your Apple Watch. And then when you have to input your password, you can actually do that directly on the Apple Watch or you can actually enter that text directly on your iPhone. You can also search for apps directly using either dictation or scribble or select from the trending list inside of the store. The Apple Watch App Store might not seem like the biggest deal out there, but before it was buried inside of the Apple Watch app on the iPhone, and I don't think that was discoverable for a lot of people. I also think that a independent Apple Watch App Store is really leading the way for a future version of either the Apple Watch or watchOS where we can have a independent Apple Watch that doesn't need an iPhone. So this is a really, really important step for the Apple Watch gaining its independence. All right, we covered a lot of features in this video, but this next feature is probably my hidden favorite. And that is the implementation of a better Siri on the Apple Watch, which includes searching for websites. So now all you have to do is tell Siri to search for a web page. It will kick that over to Google, and then you get a list of all of these different web pages you can access directly on your Apple Watch. With watchOS 5, Apple implemented the ability to use the browser on the Apple Watch, but you had to be sent a link that you could click directly. Now you can actually search the web directly from your wrist. So now you can search for different news articles quickly on your wrist. You can go shopping at apple.com for that nice new Mac Pro and then maybe buy it directly on your Apple Watch. You can even go to the main YouTube website. Unfortunately, in YouTube, the video playback is not enabled on the Apple Watch. So I'm really hoping that in watchOS 7, Apple can work that out and have a native video player on the Apple Watch for websites. And then I can go to YouTube and then just watch a small video 
right on my Apple Watch. I think that would be a really cool feature and I kind of want it. All right, everyone, and those are my top 10 Apple Watch apps for watchOS 6. As always, let me know what your favorite feature was in the comments below, or if I didn't get to a feature that you liked, be sure to also let me know in the comments. As always, if you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, including more coverage on watchOS 6, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.